What I really loved about what this group did is they made their presentation incredibly visual. And one of their concepts involved this, the, the, this idea of composting in New York City. They thought about the entire system and how it integrated with people's daily lives. But I just remember this idea of um, having these bins, not at their homes necessarily, but in their, as part of their daily commute. So you would take this bag and you would, you know, any type of like trash and you know, food that you might have, you would take it with you and on your way to your, you know, the, your subway stop, you would drop this off and you would just like drop it, drop it in and then you would go on your daily commute. And then as you're on your way back, you would pick up a bin right coming out of the metro and take that back to your house. And this idea of like connecting it to the things that people are doing every day was really interesting because oftentimes we have great ideas, but if they don't fit into people's daily lives, they're never going to work. And so that one was really powerful to me because they really thought about who would be using this and how they could make it easy for the person to actually apply it to um, their everyday. My name is Michael Peng. Design thinking for me is it's a creative way of problem solving. As a designer, people are used to you know, you design a new product or, you know, it's very closely associated to art and aesthetics. Um, but there's a certain process that's involved in doing that design. And so design thinking is the way of saying, okay, that process, the tools and the skills that designers use to create new things in the world, how can we actually extract some of those tools and those processes and use them to solve some of the world's most complex problems? The name of the class is Design Thinking, a Creative Approach to Problem Solving. In the er early conversations with Dean Shaw, um, Ellen, you know, there was this epiphany um, from Ellen and her staff that were like, you know what, the same process you use to help us understand our students, I wonder if we can teach that toolkit, that same types of tools and processes to our students, and could that be um, a differentiator for our program? And so that's where the impetus of the class uh, came about. The entire class was divided into six sections um, each uh, targeting some of the most important things that we know that people, that the students were passionate about. But at the end of it, we really wanted people to come up with ideas and uh, solid concepts of how they can actually improve certain aspects of New York. All right, you ready? Yes. Welcome everyone to our final presentation, our final class. Very exciting. Lots of guests today, um, and we'll go into that in a minute. But uh, first of all, I know you guys have been working really hard this past week based on last week's critique. Um, and so really excited to see what comes out of today. One project was reimagining what the patient experience is at hospitals within New York City. This group just sort of gravitated towards, oh, there seems to be this need um, that they were finding in, the, in their observations of a pregnant woman. And so what is a, a pregnant patient experience? Well, it's not just labor and delivery. It's uh, a period of time that usually extends to about nine months um, in between when you first realize that you might be pregnant to the time you call that special someone else and let them know that this is going on. So the first sonogram image that you see um, and to lots of different kinds of people touching your belly. <laughs> so definitely that, that labor moment and some of the moments after. So when looking at this challenge, that's our frame. And it's kind of in this process of um, interviewing this whole wealth of people that have either had babies or haven't had babies or are about to have babies. They came up with all these insights. And um, I just remember for this particular presentation, what I was really wowed about um, was this idea of uh, the hallmark moment, right? Um, oftentimes, the first thing that happens is after the baby comes out, um, they clean off the baby, you get to hold it, and then they take it away, right? And there's this really interesting idea that came out, which is the idea of a baby cam. So a camera that follows the baby. So no matter where the baby goes within the hospital, uh, the mom or whoever the family has always a line of sight to the baby so that they're always connected to them, even though if they don't, might not be physically connected. And it really was generated from this, you know, this insight that you know, people want to be, always be connected to this special, special moment. And I purposely left this one big because I didn't know where students were going to take it. It was easy for our group to identify our frustrations with how we move around the city. They naturally gravitated towards subways. And I thought, okay, that's great. There's so many opportunities to make that experience better. How can the subway adapt to our needs instead of the other way around? You know, they really tapped into watching people and watching what people were doing. How do we make this really transparent 
about when the trains are coming and how long it takes that before I even get down, I can you know, potentially take my cell phone call outside, see that the train is coming in two minutes, end my call, and then pleasantly go in. But how can something as small as putting footsteps um, actually help direct people so that they can actually, you know, it's just this natural inclination to just follow this flow of that, that people aren't just always, you know, being bunched up together. Um, so there's just a lot of fascinating ideas from that project and really simple ones. And one thing that we always talk about is it's not always one, there's not always one like big idea that's going to, you know, reshape the whole transportation um, industry, but they thought about all these different touch points um, and thought about collectively, if you were to put these all together, how powerful would that be? Um, for me, probably one of the best, if not the best, presentation, um, final presentation, in terms of not only what they came up with, but the insights, and also the way they told the story. They instantly came in, and the first thing they said is, welcome parents to this new school. So they instantly put us, the audience, in a different type of mindset. We asked people what their one inspiring moment was in high school, that one assignment which led us to our design question, how might we create an entire school of moments? Not just one inspiring moment, not just one great assignment, but an, an multiple inspiring moments every week. And then they paired that with this idea that like, thinking about the entire cycle and getting all these teachers from all these different disciplines together to actually teach one cohesive lesson. So you actually learn all the different things that you're learning in all your different classes, but you're lear learning it through one lens. What the students did is they really looked at and talked to a, a variety of different types of social entrepreneurs, and they came up with this really easy to understand three-phase journey. And they said, oh, here's the journey that social entrepreneurs go through no matter where you're at, but here are the points where it's especially New York City-centric. And then they said, in order to, for us to actually address this problem, we focused in on this middle phase. I thought that was a really great way to say, um, for, for students to actually say, okay, there is this huge problem, but here's what we found out from talking and observing people here, and, and here's what the metasynthesis of this is, this three-step process. Now, let's take that and let's build that out a little bit more. How do we enhance the cultural understanding between New York City, knowing that there's so many people always going in and out? Uh, it's such a transitory city. And I think the thing that they gravitated towards the most is the idea of the, this first-time visitor to New York City. And so their ideas really focused in on tourism, there's, there's basically different sets of needs for people who uh, first come to the city and those people who have been here for um, a little bit. How do you actually create this iconic system where if I see a green apple or if I see a red apple or if I see an orange apple, I know what, type, what this type of tip is for? I love the way they took these little stories that they heard from people and from their own experiences and said, you know, what if we were to create this piece that really educated people? Overall, students really enjoyed the way that it was just so different from their normal classes, right? Uh, it was really challenging the way they thought about problems and that it's not just a, always about words, but it could, always, it could just be aesthetics or it could be about just drawing something and how that could actually change their perception of something. And so, um, yeah, really excited to see um, how this class takes forward.